Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here. I have the pleasure of having uh, Mr. Tyler Cobble here. How are you doing, sir? Austin, doing well, man. How are you? Doing good, my man. So Tyler is in commercial real estate. He does a bunch of stuff. He writes a blog. Uh, he's all over the place. He's wrote a book. Uh, haven't had a lot of commercial guys on here, so I wanted to make sure that I brought him on. But something I wanted to point out in the beginning of the interview, because I wanted to praise you, is that y'all had the tornadoes come through. You had so many things happen to Nashville this year. And I have watched you really stand up as a pillar of your community uh, and really be a voice for, for good and better. And you're, you're just in to do work. And I just wanted to commend you and have that on record so everybody could hear it. Oh, well, that's great to hear, man. I really appreciate it. You know, it's, uh, it's been a weird few months. You know, that tornado came through on March 3rd. And then we got shut down by coronavirus about 10 days later. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, East Nashville got hit pretty hard and that's, that's where I'm based. And so it's, it's been weird for sure. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the reconstruction hasn't even started yet because of coronavirus. So it's, it's uh, it's bizarre. So you can start where you want to in your story. I always let my guests start where they want to. So you could talk about how you got started or really wherever you want, you can start. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm a proud uh, college dropout. I went to the University of Tennessee for uh, about a year uh, before I decided, you know what, Uh, it's time to get back to work. I actually went into sales immediately out of high school and did really well with that. And, you know, so I was sitting in class one day taking a a geography class I'd taken in eighth grade and, and I made 30 grand that summer. I was like, I made 30 grand in three months. If I did that, 12 months out of the year, I'd make $120,000. Why am I sitting in a geography class? So dropped out, moved back to Nashville, started working as a project manager uh, for my grandfather's construction company. And my plan was to just take his company and scale it. Uh, But about three months into that, a developer that i had actually sold to, um, I sold Cutco Knives, a developer that I sold to uh, reached out. He heard I was in town and he asked me to uh, come work with him. He had a uh, 150,000 square foot shopping center and a 57,000 square foot office building that he just felt weren't getting enough attention from the big guys. So he wanted somebody in house. So he paid for me to get my real estate license and gave me both of those listings and said, get to work. Um, That was back in 2013. And Nashville in 2013 was a very different market than it is now. That was really kind of right around the time where Nashville started taking off. So, you know, commercial real estate lags about a year or so behind residential. And so in 2013, homes were being built all over the place. Uh, but commercial real estate was still, still really slow. So uh, it took me about two years before I stabilized both of those, uh, those assets. And um, that, the company that I was working with was a, a small boutique firm. So they did multifamily. They did office, retail, industrial, single family custom homes, townhomes. We did a little bit of everything. So I got to see that. And so I put together my first development deal uh, when I was 24, which was a 42-unit townhome development just southwest of Nashville and because of everything that I was working on there with them. And then uh, ended up writing the book, um, Open for Business, which was a, uh, my first book on, on leasing commercial real estate and decided shortly thereafter, you know what, it's time to go start my own thing. So I started the Cobble Group in 2018 and uh, we've been, you know, representing uh, investors and tenants looking for space since then. And I buy uh, as well. So we've been doing a little bit of everything. So I have this theory and I think you'll love it. I see these young kids these days in multifamily, right? I have a kid who's 24, who's got 186 units. And there's other kids I know that have 200, 400. I almost think there's some glory in the unknown of knowledge and just figuring it out, right? And, yeah. I, and you look at a 30, 40, 50 year old trying to move into multifamily, he was a doctor, he was an engineer, and there's so much reservation because they have context on their life. Do you think right. that's true? I think it's absolutely true. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I get myself into, you know, I mean, so we're, I'm working on a 220 unit multifamily development right now. 
And, uh, you know, it's a $13 million equity raise and it's a $31 million, $32 million all in project. I was talking to another developer the other day. He's in his fifties. He's like, do you know what you've gotten yourself into? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. But I also kind of don't. So I think that that's what's working in my favor right now. It's like, I'll figure out how to make it happen. Uh, but I don't have those reservations cause I haven't, you know, uh, haven't had that much experience. So it's, I think it's such a, it's a great thing. Because, because also, and, and somebody mentioned this to me the other day, it's like, I, I've got to a point where like the coaching is uh, a lot of my business. I still do real estate investing, but I have walked down a path that is like, what's the option? Like I'm doing what I love. Yeah. So what am, what am I going to go do? Be a uh, 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 perfume salesman at Abercrombie and French. Like this is what I love to do. And you almost have to, as my coach would describe it, you almost have to walk down a hall with the lights off and you don't know where the doors are. Right. Well, you know, the, the best phrase I've ever heard about that, it was the same developer I was talking with. He goes, you know what, you know, if you're going to drown, you know, you can drown in six inches of water. You can drown in six feet of water. You might as well go for it and drown in six feet. Right. <laughs> because <laughs> that was because, such a great quote. I was like, Absolutely. because, because at the end of the it. day, you're going to be better for it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Like on paper, when you say hmm, 13 million raise, 32 million, it's like, fuck, that's crazy. But once you do this, right? And once you seem in it, what, whatever you want is available. That's what people don't get about large scale development. Exactly. And I mean, the thing is like, even if I fail, I will have learned so much more mm -hmm. than I ever could have learned from trying to do a two build, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, that's, that's the thing. And, and that's what's so exciting about it. Dude, I got a co I got a coaching client, brand new. He's twenty three. He's like, I'm like, what's your goals? He's like, I want like two single family residents before I'm thirty. And I was like, Playa, that's seven years. Uh, you, I could you have you could have that before you could have that before next quarter. Like, <laughs> no, come you on. could have that next month. Like, yeah. let's expand the mind, right? And so, I guess this is an important topic because you're driven you care about people and you're going to figure it out. So the question that I have to ask you is what, what's your, like, if you have a defined why, like what makes you want to push every day and write blogs and help people? Like, what is that? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, I get asked that all the time because people are like, how do you do all of this stuff? Cause you know, cause we've, we've got the blog We're running two to three times a week on that. I've got the, the YouTube channel. We're posting a video every week on that. We're about to launch a podcast. You know, we're going to be launching one of those every week. Um, and on top of that, you know, we've got $37 million under contract. That's just the brokerage. We're taking, you know, I've got a property management company. I've got personally um, that I'm buying about $22 million under contract. And so we're raising equity for that. Um, you know, it's, I genuinely love what I do. I mean, I get up every morning at five. And I'm super excited to jump out of bed and start listening to a podcast to start my day off because I can't wait to start working on everything again. And, you know, my biggest why I would say is because I love the city. You know, Nashville has given me everything. And so I love being able to give back to the city. And that's one thing that I think a lot of people in this profession don't necessarily think about that they really should. I mean, everything that we do has an impact on so many lives that you'll never know about. You know, I tell people all the time this story. It wasn't even one of our clients. It was just a buddy of mine, three, three friends that opened up a coffee shop right down the street from my office. And we're on an emerging corridor. So before there was a coffee shop there, it was this old building that you would drive past and probably not even notice. And there was no life in there. It was kind of falling apart. So they got in there, renovated it, and made the most beautiful coffee shop you've ever seen. And it's the only coffee shop on the corridor. And you go in there at three in the afternoon, you can't sit anywhere. It's packed. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those great stories of like, they literally created all of this energy and life mm -hmm. and activity in here. There's people that are writing their thesis in the corner over there. There's two people having a meeting talking about potential commercial real estate deals. There's you know, people that are coming and going and just getting coffee, but it's created this hub, uh, you know, all this activity. And I think that that's super cool that we can have that impact in this industry where three guys had an idea and think about the thousands and thousands of lives that they've impacted, even if it was just like somebody coming in to get the coffee, you know, that, to me, that's super cool. And so 
Uh, at the end of the day, I want to have a tower on the skyline. I want to have the most architecturally significant tower on the Nashville skyline because, you know, to me, it's, it's, it's a monument to the city, you know, and, and I think that there's something so beautiful about that. See, this is why I wish I had questions sometimes because there's three points I want to hit on that. But something I somebody told me, because I do Airbnb at a large scale, million yeah. dollar projects, something like that. But he said something, something that I wish I could tell everybody that's in real estate, that's a multifamily owner, Airbnb, single family, whatever it is. Respect the fact that you're a landlord. And, right. and these people are creating memories inside of your building with their kids or they're growing up. And we somehow have lost that like it's a business transaction and I get that, but I take it so much more. I had 20 years in the hospitality and hotels. So I, I, ha, I take it so much more seriously. And when you boil it down and you really look at commerce, people just care about experiences. That's the new yeah. currency. Yeah. You know, we're very intentional about the kind of clients that we'll take on. You know, we, we work almost exclusively with small local businesses because those are the only things that I want to see all around the city. I don't care about seeing another Wendy's, you know, hopefully Wendy's isn't listening and going, Oh, well, we were going to hire Tyler, but now we're not. I mean, you know, it's, we don't need another check cashing place. We don't need another pod shop. That to me is just not exciting. You know, that, that corporate, like, Oh, it's all about the demographics. You know, you look at all these small local businesses and, and just the, the character that they can bring to a neighborhood is massive. Like you can't quantify that, but, but the character that a big corporate company can take away from a neighborhood Mm -hmm. can't really quantify that either, but you can see it. No. So, you know, it's, I had this soapbox rant. I was getting my haircut. Like the first time I ever got a real haircut, like the kid was like, uh, it's going to be a while. Like I'm going to do work on you. And like, I was, it was in Sacramento and I was thinking to myself, like, this is how America comes back. Yeah. Like, this is how it comes back by somebody caring this much to give me the best haircut, the best attention ever. And I tipped him like more than the haircut was worth. And I thought to myself, like, that's a kid that's spent six months studying to give the perfect haircut. And we have, we have disconnected ourselves to society by convenience, which I get, but there's so much, amazing local flavor and and this is a this is a topic i'm on right now i believe the only thing that matters in this world is energy because energy can generate a change in anything it allows people to open up their hearts to see new things it allows them to move and when you're creating the buzz right that's why i moved back to we could have moved wherever we wanted that's why i moved back to around austin because let's just call it what it is central texas is on fire And the buzz is amazing. And to be around that, that's all I want to do is ride that wave. And I lived in Nashville. It's the same thing that's going on in Nashville. It's so much fun to be a part of shaping a community. You know, the thing that um, has really resonated with me lately, you know, everybody when they get into business is like, okay, we got to scale. First thing we got to do is figure out how to put the systems in place to take this all over the world. And you know what? Not everything should scale. I mean, that, that's been the, the corporate mantra for the last 40, 50, 60, 70 years is how can we scale? How can we scale? And you look how much character all of these businesses lose. Like you read uh, Sam Walton's book on, I, I can't remember what it was called, Made in America or something like that, where he talks about, you know, in the early days, he used to go to every single Walmart and he would go in there and he'd be measuring and, and you know, stuff like that. And, and there was something beautiful about that. You know, I get, I get my shirts made from a local bespoke clothier. Well, he can't scale. It's him, right? Like he can't really scale that, mm-hmm. nor, nor should he, right? Like, cause if he does, then I'm going to go find another bespoke guy to make my shirts. Cause there's just some, you know, there's something to be said about the level of service, the level of, of quality that comes from an expert being there and working with you to do it. Uh, you know, that that's irreplaceable in my opinion. You just, you just told me, you just made me rethink my entire coaching business because I'm thinking, no, because what's the point of scaling if you can't give the personal touch? That's why they hire me as a coach in the first place. Right. And I was talking to my buddy who started a mastermind, right? And the first hundred people that joined his group, he gave them a video message. And I was like, oh my God. Like, and what I started doing now, 
I don't send happy birthday texts anymore. I send happy birthday videos. That's awesome. Yeah. And, my pe- and my people, because this is my thing. I'm hospitality. This is what I do. I'm a networker. Yeah. And, my, and my friends are like, dude, it's so personal. Like when you do it. And I think, perfect example, uh, I, I order stuff from Andy Fraselli's company, First Form. They always have a handwritten note in there. Like, and, and Jake and Gino's crew, like anytime you go to an event, they give you a note and a book and you're just like, dude, that's, yes. Like that's the way I want to do business. And we, and and look at it, you're, you're bringing them up right now because they did a handwritten note that took them two minutes to do. And you just brought it up on your podcast. However long after, right? Like that sticks. It's been a year. It's been a year. Yeah. Yeah. Like it sticks with you, man. Uh, You know, it's so impactful. You know, I love that. Something I want to bring up, I, I, want, I thought about it earlier. I don't want to lose it because I saw a post that you made on the traffic you were getting when you first started the blog and then now. Yeah. And I thought it's so important because I get so caught in my head with the content sometimes. You feel like nobody's listening. And then I went to a meetup and like seven dudes were like, oh, dude, I love your stuff. I was like, what? I don't even know who you are. Talk yeah. about that. I think it's so important. So, you know, we've kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, half-assed our blog for the last three years. It was always one of those things that I knew was like, oh, you know, you got, you got to do it. You know, it helps with SEO. And so every now and then I would crank out a 500 word blog and it would take me three hours because, you know, I didn't want to do it. And I, it was on a Saturday and I was having a drink and, you know, it was just, it, it, it wasn't a priority for me. Mm-hmm. And when the pandemic hit, I'm sitting in my office going, you know, this is weird. I've gone from 99% of my time out of the office and client meetings, site tours, I mean, running and gunning. Then I would have to go home and do all of my, you know, work at home after that to catch up on everything to now sitting 100% of my time in the office going, okay, well, I guess it's time to catch up on everything I've wanted to do for the last three years that I haven't had time for. And blogging became one of those. It was, it was, you know what? I have the opportunity to write and I have this knowledge to share and I also have literally nothing else to do. <laughs> so I just started writing, man, and, and started studying. And I, mean, I watched, I've watched hours and hours and hours of YouTube videos on how to blog, YouTube videos on how to start a YouTube channel. I mean, everything. I, you know, I dove into it because I had the time. And... So one thing I started started following was um, Google Search Console will show you how much how much organic traffic your website is getting and how much like what keywords are pointing traffic to you. And uh, you know the first couple months it starts off slow, but we're posting three to four times a week because literally I'm do I'm just in the office writing articles. But man, it you get two to three months into it. And it just takes off. I mean, we were posting high quality content and I was making sure to do it the right way, but I didn't change anything else. I just started posting more, writing more, and it took off. And now we're getting, I think we had about a thousand organic visitors a month, which is decent for a, you know, local commercial real estate brokerage. Uh, But now we get 11,000 organic visits to our website every month. And we're only posting about once a week now. And it's still, it's, it's going up on this, you know, exponential trajectory. Um, it's, it's pretty wild to see, but it, it makes a difference. No, I had lunch with Bruce Peterson last week and he was talking yeah. about like, he, you know, we're having dinner Friday night and he was like, Austin, like the book's great. And he's like, but I just give it away now. If you really want it, I'll just give it to you because what it's done for my business, meaning don't look at the numbers that the book sold, but look about the right. money that I can raise because of that. And I think that's where a lot of young investors get lost. There, there's just, it's just things to the pyramid, right? That, that, that you can offer, but I'm going to give you, I shouldn't share this online. We should talk about it off, but whatever people don't do it. So I'm going to give you the biggest hack of your life. And it's what I'm doing when you start the podcast. Awesome. So every, every week I do a rant, like eight to 15 minutes. We have transcribed those rants and that's going to be the blog. So we're already doing that yes. because it's, it, that's such a great idea that a lot of people don't do. So what I do is I actually, so I write the blog posts mm-hmm. 
And then I turn that into a script for the YouTube videos. And then I'll take that script and I'll make it a little more conversational. So I'll go through and basically just change the wording up a bit. Mm -hmm. And then that's my podcast script. So that's another blog to post. So the and content, it just, it's like Gary V. like, how do you take one piece of content and make it into 4 trillion pieces of content? Like uh, it's, it's brilliant. It works. It's, it's, it's the way it works. And, and on scale, it seems like you're doing so much, but I think, and, and this is something I, I would like to hear your opinion on. The biggest thing I did in my life was a year ago when I had a business fail and I lost money for the first time. And I realized that I was lying to myself about what I was good at. Like I was like, I'm going to make it work because I'm over here. And then I'm like you said, I'm trudging uphill instead of just doing what I do. And I have farmed out everything that doesn't suit me anymore. I just do what I'm good yep. at. And it's a game changer. It's, uh, that makes a, a huge, huge difference. I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not organized, right? Like when it comes to, you know, I always tell people I'm the Steve Jobs. I'm not the Waz. You know, like I, I can't dive into the details and tell you, you know, break everything down step by step by step by step. And I, I'm the guy that goes, here's the big picture. Let's go do this. And then I'll go out and I'll, sh you know, kiss some hands, shake some babies. And that's what I'm great at. You know what I'm not good at? Bookkeeping. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't keep books for, to save my life. And I know that. And so I hire a bookkeeper mm -hmm. and, you know, that's changed my life because now I'm spending, you know, you know, instead of trying to, uh, it's like bodybuilding, man. You got bad calves, but you got, you know, a great upper body. Like, <laughs> you know, your, your calves are never going to be great. You don't have the genetics to pull that off. Focus on your upper body, like mm -hmm. whatever, right? Like focus on what you're amazing at and make that get even better at that. And then hire everything else around you to, to help, you know, sustain you. My buddy says like, why would you strengthen your weaknesses? It doesn't make any sense. Like right. it's, it's the truth, but something you'll love. Cause I think you're similar to me. So my team calls it halo networking. So, you know, the, you know, the, the, the military guys that are so high up, they have to wear masks and they have to, yep. that's how I network. Like yeah. drop me in the party. I'll know everybody before there's full stories. And if you ask my assistant and my business partner to do that, they'd still be in the car complaining about having to go in there. Like just right. do what you do. Right. <laughs> It's yeah. just the truth, you know? Exactly. I mean, you know, you, you can go out and hunt, but, you know, like you're talking about, you cast that net. Everyone gets to know you a little bit. You know, they, they listen to the podcast. They watch a YouTube video. They read your blog. You know, they follow you on Instagram. I mean, that's what I've found. is like people start to really feel like they connect with you and know you. I mean, I, I think that that's such a great way of approaching marketing. It's so weird. I just had like deja vu. I swear to God, we've had this conversation before because it was like, that's awesome because, because no, this is the last conversation I had on the last podcast. There is a new world where we live in where, where people need to understand and know who you are to do business with you. Right. And if you, if you are not, and, and a lot of the guys I coach are younger dudes. Right. And they're like, well, I couldn't start a podcast. I've only done one deal. And I'm like, bro, it has nothing to do with that. It's about Dude, start a podcast on how you're learning. Yes. I mean, that's a great thing. Cause guess, guess how many other people are out there? They're like, I don't even know how to get started. And you're literally taking them step by step of, Hey, look, here's what I messed up today. Here's what I learned from it. That's something that somebody that's been doing it for 20 years can't tell you. No expert seekers changed my life. And it was like, you have to create the hero's journey, but they have to fall in love with you. So like, you don't know this about me, but like I was, I had a meth addiction and I was homeless and I was an alcoholic for 20 years. Like I just fucking said all that shit on my podcast and everybody's like, Oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, like, I don't care. Like that's who I was. It's not who I am, but it, but it gives me such credit. Like I lost 65 pounds. It gives me such credibility with they're watching the journey and they're seeing the work. Right. And it's yeah. just, there's such a, there's such a tangible thing to that. I mean, you're, you're the, you're the guy that was formerly obese. That's now a fitness trainer, right? Like everybody loves that because they can relate to it. You can relate to them. Like, I think that that's amazing. Yeah. Congrats, by the way. That's huge. Thank you. Yeah. I, I kind of gloss over it, but it's been a while. It's a couple of years. <laughs> this, this year has <laughs> been a little crazy too, but, uh, but I digress. I'm happy. But what I want to talk about is my favorite topic. And I think is mindset. Cause I think that you yeah. can have all the knowledge you want. Uh, this is what I coach on. You can have all, you can learn about real estate. I have a new theory 
stop trying to figure everything about, about fucking real estate and just move through it and you'll learn. So what on a day-to-day basis or where did you get this, this mindset that you've cultivated and, and where does that come from? I think it's a great question. I, you know, one, it probably comes from being an older child, uh, or the oldest of, of my siblings. Um, you know, I always was kind of more independent doing things on my own, which meant a lot of the time it's like, figure it out. Right. And so, you know, just over the years and then, um, you know, my, when I was in high school, my mom was diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer. And so I had to deal with that. And, um, shortly thereafter, my parents got a divorce. And so went from, you know, this, this picture perfect life to, okay, if I don't go out and get a job and, you know, help my family out, like no one is. So, you know, it just immediately to me, it was like, that's the decision to make. Went out and got a job in sales, did really well, been supporting myself ever since I was 18. And I, I just, you know, I think I, I just have this attitude. It's like, cool, man, let's go jump off the cliff. Uh, well, you don't have a parachute. That's fine. I'll figure it out. Like, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I mean, I get myself into those situations all the time. I don't get, I never get stressed out. Like all my friends that, you know, they have, you know, these W2 jobs working for someone else. They're always stressed out. I'm like, how are you stressed? Like if you knew half the shit that I have to deal with on a daily basis, your mind would explode. But I don't get, I just don't get stressed. So I think I'm, I'm very blessed in that sense. But that's it, man. It's just, it's just having an attitude of like, whatever. I mean, I'll figure it out. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. What's, what's the worst that could happen? I'm not, you know, somebody's not handing me a rifle and telling me to run at the enemy. Like it's, it's really not that bad. I heard a podcast this morning with with Tom Ballou on impact theory. And the guy was saying, there's either two things that happen. You either act on the emotion or you progress, right? There's no other difference. And we are a society that reacts on emotion and allows other people to dictate the way that we operate. And so my, my joke is I get all these young kids. Well, should I invest now? Well, I don't know where the market is. I don't know. And I'm like, guys, uh, I don't move with the wind. I make the motherfucking wind. Exactly. And, and when you operate in that way, it doesn't matter where the market is because a deal's a deal, right? There's so, you know, my favorite question, you're going to fucking lose your shit. My favorite question is I'll do a whole Airbnb talk, like 45 minutes of like high level shit. Like, Oh, dude, you could get this property and you could retire in this blah, blah, blah. And the first question out of everybody's mouth is, how do you go about starting an LLC? And I'm like, you haven't even gone and found the asset yet. Just calm down. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. I've, that's, that's always mind boggling to me too, is because, you know, I mean, on the commercial real estate brokerage side, we'll have people reach out and they're like, oh, I'm just starting my business. I actually just got my LLC. I'm like, what? Uh, that just... Uh, Okay, I mean, I could I could log on to the Secretary of State and start another LLC right now. That doesn't that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but they, they um, think it's so signal signifying, you know. Yeah, it's you know, and, and and you know what? Honestly, though, for for some people, like great, like take that badge. Like I, I hope that that inspires you. Um, but man, it's it, it's one of those things that also makes me look back to high school. And be like, why didn't they teach us more about entrepreneurship? Mm. Why didn't they teach people that you can file an LLC for a hundred bucks and, mm-hmm. and it's not that big of a deal? I mean, I, you know, I started my first LLC when I was like, I don't know, 18 mm-hmm. uh, or 17, like sometime when I was probably in high school, just messing around. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's all about the mentality, you know, mm-hmm. in my opinion, the best horse that you could ever bet on is yourself. Mm. If you, if you just make the decision to wake up every morning and go do everything in your power that day to pull off whatever it is you want to pull off, you'll be successful. Mm-hmm. You'll be successful. Maybe you don't have the money, but because you're meeting with everyone you possibly can, some guy, you're going to run into some guy that goes, you know what? I actually have a lot of capital I got to place. Yeah. Well, there you go. Dude. You somehow pulled it off. Like that's, I mean, honestly, I don't, you know, I don't put a, 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 $18 million deal under contract and go, cool. Good thing. I've got the money set aside. It's like, yeah. no, okay, well now I got to go figure out the money part. You know, it's, it's just take it step by step. Eat the elephant bite by bite. That's no, all it is. And I have a new rule that I learned from losing money in that business. I don't worry about scaling the business. I let the business scale the business. Yeah. 
It's going to come. Let, meaning let's be so busy that we have to worry about putting an LLC together. Let's be so busy about having to hire other people. And like the million I'm writing with my, my coaching client and his wife. And she's like, how are you so like nonchalant about a million point three mansion in the Colorado mountains? Like you're just going to run it. And you haven't even seen it yet. And one in Montana, I was like, well, I mean, it's like whatever. I mean, I'll just take the pictures. Like, I yeah. mean, uh, I also, I also get to know. hang, I also get to hang out at that property. So we're good. Like, yeah. you know, like, like, but you, and every time right you do it. Right. And here's my thing. A lot of my guys, I just got off a coaching call. He's like, man, I really don't want to be an agent anymore. I want to be an investor. And I'm like, well, you're 22 years old. Like, and I was like, what gives you the right? What have you done in your life to be retired and be an investor? Have you gone all in on being an agent? Like all the way in. And I'm like, and this is what I shock them with, bro. You got 70 more years, yeah. 70 more years. You better figure out some, some stuff that's a little bigger than a bit than a transaction. Yeah. I've, I've never understood that mentality. I, th I think that there's a fine line between impatience and drive. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you're 22. Absolutely. You want to be an investor. That's the drive side of it. Mm -hmm. But you're 22, you don't want to be a real estate agent anymore. You just want to be an investor. That's impatient. And there's, you can't, like, man, I didn't buy my first office building until I was 26. You think I wanted to be an investor when I was 21? Hell yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be a broker. But you know what? I still broker stuff today. Like, mm -hmm. it's just part of it. You've got it. It's, it's part of the hustle. You know, and, and what I do is I take almost, you know, I think I live off of like $3,000 a month. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really cost me a whole lot to live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I invest every other dollar from my commissions into commercial real estate. And I'm going to keep doing that until I have a portfolio that literally pays for more properties. Dude. And then I'm going to focus on that. I mean, it's just, you got to take it step by step by step. I, uh, I, I, I said a quote, <laughs> social media, I said a quote on a podcast and he highlighted it and then posted it. And then I reposted it and I got so much pushback, which I don't, all it's all good but i said if sacrificed properly and working intentionally you can retire from real estate in three years and 90 shitty agents go well no and i'm, I'm my, in my first three years and i go okay hold, let's back it let's back the train up let's back the train up if your car was paid off and you live with your mom and you were making three thousand dollars a month and you didn't have any other debt that's financially free you you have to redefine what that looks like guys like most that's people what I was aren't willing to make that sacrifice. Who cares if you live at home with your mom? Like I'm, I mean, I'm living at home with my mom right now. She moved out to California and she left her townhouse here. And I saw an opportunity of like, well, I mean, Hey, I can move back into my mom's place, mm -hmm. you know, cover the cost of living, but I don't have to pay for anything. Mm -hmm. Help her get this fixed up. It doesn't cost me anything. So how mm -hmm. much money am I saving? I was paying 1500 a month to, to rent a place downtown. But you want to know why, right? You don't want to know why. Because it's, it's, it's all about the image. Well, it's the same thing in multifamily. If I have to have another conversation with a fucking multifamily investor that says, oh, I got a thousand units. And I'm like, no, bro, you don't. Like you have a point percentage of a thousand units and you get like a little return. And then you have Tyler Chester who has a 50 unit by himself. That's making real money. Like my, yeah. okay, more importantly, what's sexy? A thousand unit apartment that's brand new that you get like maybe 200 bucks from or my client who's got a trailer park in California that he's net cash flowing $8,000 a month on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's so much about the image. Now, it's one thing if you are the GP mm -hmm. and you're the primary GP, you know, you're the primary partner in the GP on a thousand units. That's a completely different story. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, all these guys that, you know, they throw 25 grand into a few deals. They're like, oh, I've got a thousand units. No, no, you don't, dude. You're an no, you investor don't. in somebody else's thousand units. And if you were, if you were smart, you take the 25,000 and you would say, let me, let me jump in here and be as much of an asset I can to learn every aspect of this business. And then you've taken your 25,000 and you've turned it into a $150,000 education, but they don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one thing I want to talk about real quick, because this has just got me thinking about it. Uh, you don't have to have any money to buy property, by the way. <laughs> you know, for anybody listening going, oh, I don't have enough money. I, I don't know how to put deals together. You don't have to have any of that. 
my first deal, I bought a 6,000 square foot office building and I didn't have any money. I was 26. I just started my commercial real estate brokerage. I was living paycheck to paycheck, essentially, um, (laughs) which is kind of how all brokers live. But I found a deal and negotiated a commission on it and then went and found two investors and I rolled that commission in as my portion of the equity. And then I took another 10% equity in the project for finding the deal, putting it together and managing it. I got 25% in my first project out of that and I didn't have any money. So you just got to get creative with how you structure these deals. You can buy commercial property. You can buy investments if you don't have any money. And, you know, to the guy that's saying he doesn't want to be a real estate agent anymore, I bet he heard that. He's like, absolutely. I want to be a real estate agent still. That's 3%, man. That becomes 15%. That becomes 15% equity if you're putting 20% down. So think about that. We've, we talk a lot and we don't listen enough. And what I mean by that is the only way to get business done properly is to understand the friction of the deal. And, you know, we walk into a deal. Well, I know they would never, like I had a guy call me the other day. I met him on the golf range. You know, I get my number out to everybody. I'm like, I don't even know who the fuck this is, but I'll talk to you. And he goes, he's running through all these scenarios, right? And he's like, I'm going to lowball him. I was like, well, do you have the deal yet? And he goes, no. I said, then what the fuck are we talking about? We're not even talking about anything. You're making up, you're creating seven different scenarios of why you can or what's going to happen. Give me the actual asset with a agreed upon price. And then we can talk about strategies. I mean, that's, that's exactly it. I think that, you know, people get so in their heads with these hypothetical situations. It's like, look, it's, it's super easy. Put the deal under contract and then go out and raise the money. Mm -hmm. Talk to everybody you can. I raised for my first time, I raised like 70 K the other day in like 20 minutes. And I was like, Oh shit, that was was really super easy. Well, it's a great deal. And we have a, we have a portion of control in the deal. So it's even better because we can put our hands on it. So, you know, but, but what I've, what, what I try to harp on and I'd love to hear your advice to anybody new starting on the business, maybe three points is that what I tell them is this get started now, like yesterday and, and, and also, but weaponize yourself with all of the available options to invest. And I'm not just talking about real estate. Like my financial advisor manages like 2 billion. He's young. Like he, like he works with a lot of real estate guys. Like there's so many different ways to invest your money that works for you. That if you started at 20 or you started at 18 and you built up at 32, you could be retired. Yeah, I, I think that that's exactly right. You got to surround yourself with the right people, right? And that's that's professionally and personally. You know, most of my my friend circle now, they're all ten to fifteen years older than me. Dude, I saw your video. I saw your post, and all five of y'all had Teslas. I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you have great great friends think alike, right? I mean, yeah. uh, we actually all got it because what I got mine because my buddy. Uh, he, he, I did a test drive in his. I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever sat at. Mm-hmm. So literally within two weeks, I had one. And then a couple months later, our other buddy got one. And we're just like, all right, man, Tesla gang, <laughs> yeah. let's do this. No, I love it. But yeah, you, you got to surround yourself with like-minded people. I mean, look, you know, honestly, one of the biggest blessings that came out of dropping out of college was that all of my friends were still in college and not in Nashville. I was the only guy that I knew that came back to Nashville. They were all still in Athens and Knoxville and you know, down at the Grove and so I didn't go out and drink. I didn't go out and party. I didn't have anything else to do but work. Mm-hmm. And if you surround yourself with people who all they do is live for the weekend and then they want to go out and get shit-faced and that's that's what they look forward to every mm-hmm. week. You're going, you, you are the five people that you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. That's what you become. Mm -hmm. So if you surround yourself with people who are entrepreneurs, who are real estate investors, who are actively trying to better themselves, you will become all three of those things. Mm -hmm. So it's super important to be very picky about who you, who you spend time with, because that's all you have. Every now and then, probably once a month, maybe twice a month, I'll get up at 2.30 or 3 in the morning and go to the gym and post it on my Instagram so my competition knows they don't stand a fucking chance. That's and right. it's, just, it's just me planting the flag and letting you know that you will not outwork me. And it feels like I'm doing everything, but I'm really doing, I'm not really doing a lot. 
because I've leveraged out myself out of a lot of things or understanding what every day, what hits the button for my business, right? And my problem, because I am way older than you, uh, is that I was, in my 20s, I was nine miles wide and a centimeter deep. Oh yeah. And so now, now I'm one mile, I'm one, I'm one foot wide and 90 feet down. I do two things. This is what I do. And I, and, and I, I, if I cannot get a point farther across, like my old boss who I'm having lunch with today, who's worked in commercial development for 20 fucking years, private equity. He said, when you find the bullseye, he goes, you hit that baby so hard, you knock it off the fucking wall. Yeah. Man, when I when I first got started in brokerage, I would take on any deal that came my way. I even considered taking on a project in Memphis, which is three hours away, because it was bi- it was big enough for me at the time to be like, man, I mean, I could I could drive to Memphis on a Friday and spend the day doing tours and drive back. Like that's worth it. Now I have a 15 minute radius. And if you call me and you're 30 seconds outside of that radius, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to refer you to somebody else. It's not like you figure so, out what you're amazing at. It's that one inch wide, mile deep thing. It's this is my area. I don't want to work outside this area. I want to be the expert in this specific location. How do you stay so disciplined? I Because money's money, baby. And that's the hardest part for these new investors and agents. It's like It is. I think that you get to a certain point where you realize it's not worth your time anymore. Because I mean, it, I, because it, you know what it is, I ooh, ooh. I had it yesterday because somebody brought a project to me, and I was like, you know, it's 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 a project I dreamed of, but I realized what it'll do to change my lifestyle, and I love my lifestyle. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. but I love hurts. being able to, I love being able to leave my like get an alert on my phone. You've got a meeting in ten minutes, and be like, oh, okay, cool. Well, I can leave in five minutes, and I'll be there. I'll get mm-hmm. there in time. And that's mm-hmm. I love that convenience factor. I also love this side of town. And you know what really did it in for me? So last year, I bought a 12,000 square foot office building in South Nashville. The rest of my portfolio, East Nashville. Super easy for me to work on everything in East Nashville. And I found myself being like, damn it, I've got to, you know, I got to drive across town to go work on this one property. Mm-hmm. And we, I mean, we knocked the project out of the park. Uh, you know, it's a 30% return for the investors in 16 months when we were telling them it was going to be- sold it, right? Is it the one yeah, it's selling it? at the end, it's selling yeah. at the end of this month. Yeah, yeah. Which you know, we 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 originally sold them on a thirty six month timeline, so it was phenomenal. But every time I had to go over there and work on it, I was just, I was like, man, this is awful. And mm-hmm. I, and I'm like, I, I sit there and I start thinking to myself, why am I feeling this? I don't feel this way about any of the other deals that I'm working on. Yeah. And so you know, that's just that's when I was like, okay, that's it. I'm not taking on anything outside of this radius anymore because clearly I enjoy doing this. I don't enjoy doing this. And the other thing that a lot of people don't think about is, yeah, maybe there's some money in it, but what is that opportunity going to take away from another opportunity, mm-hmm. right? Like if you're having to go spend time doing something that you don't like, you got to drive 30 minutes to go to a showing. What is that 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back actually taking mm-hmm. away from you? Is that an hour of cold calls? Is that an hour of prospecting through Facebook? Is that an hour of door knocking in your neighborhood where you want to do deals? I mean, the, you, you, the people just don't think about that. And on a metaphysical level, to take it another notch, because I always go deep layered, you're also signaling to the, to the universe that you have an abundant mentality, not scarcity. Exactly. And because you have abundance, the universe is going to give you what you want. It's, it's, very, it's a very uh, thin line point, but it's very important. And it's, I think it's the hardest thing agents work on. It really is. I mean, look, I was one of the first, you know, Nashville's not a huge city, right? So if you're a commercial real estate broker, there's probably fewer than 400 of us. And I'd say even fewer than a hundred that really do 80% of the work. It's not a huge city. So, so you'll take on a listing up in Hendersonville, which is 15 minutes outside of downtown Northeast. You'll take on a listing in Spring Hill, which is 30 minutes South of downtown. You know, you take on kind of everything. So when I became the East Nashville guy, I was the first commercial real estate broker in Nashville to really niche down into a location. And I said, I'm going to be the guy for this area. And, you know, when it first started out, it was like, okay, cool. This is cute. He's, he's the East Nashville guy. Um, 
but now, you know, two years later, I got a call from a residential real estate agent yesterday who was referring me another residential real estate agent who has a listing because it's in East Nashville. And they're like, oh, you got to call Tyler. He is the expert in East Nashville. Mm -hmm. Well, once you start getting that reputation for that, dude, yeah. no, why would they call anybody else in your neighborhood? Well, <laughs> call you. it's so funny that you say that because I call it my checkered past, call it my attitude, but I seem to yeah. get the hard cases in coaching. They want the stubborns, but I'm okay because I'm willing yeah. to go down there with them because they know that, you know, oh, you can't stop drinking call Austin. He'll fuck you right up. Like, yeah. you know, and, and so it's like, my question to you is as simple as this. I wake up every day and I tell myself there's gotta be more, there's gotta be more love. There's gotta be more time. There's gotta be more time with loved ones, friends. And it's taken so much like perfect example. If you're a brand new agent or real investor and you're, and you're listening to this and you're just getting started, I want you to take two neighborhoods and I want you to become the fucking specialist in those neighborhoods. I got a friend who runs a brokerage and has been investing in Round Rock, Texas for 11 years. And he's been beating that town up for 11 years straight. And he doesn't even really buy outside of that town. And yeah. it's like, and he just sells the same houses over and over again. And it's like, it's okay, guys. It's all relative. Yeah. Can you imagine walking into a listing appointment and being like, oh, Mrs. Jones, I've sold this house twice before. Yeah. I love the renovations you did. It should move even faster. Yeah. Like, come on to, yeah. to have that level of expertise. You walk into an appointment like that and they're like, why would we even consider listing with anyone else? Right. But, like, yeah, that's, there's something to be said about that. I think too, you know, for the newer guys, like quit worrying about the image. Mm -hmm. quit worrying about that. You know, everybody's so worried about being flashy and getting a new car and doing this. Like, no, slum it, man. Like, make the sacrifice. That's that you have to. Like, I work my ass off. I don't really go out on the weekends and party, hardly ever. I go home and I write a blog post or I go home and start thinking about a YouTube video that we can make or I go on a walk and I listen to a podcast. I'm always trying to get better because I'm 28. You know, I, I have, this is the perfect time for me to be sacrificing all of that, learning everything that I can so that I can buy as many properties as I can now so that in 10 years, I can then go do all the stuff that you are trying to show off that you're doing, but I can have money doing it and I can drink the nice wines and I can have the nice bourbons and I can spend $10,000 on gambling at, you know, poker in Vegas and not really care that I lose it because guess what? I've got properties that are bringing me a hundred thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. You know, like it doesn't matter. That's yeah. what's cool. I don't know if you'll ever upgrade from a uh, white claw mango though, but, uh, <laughs> but, but I what I I'll ever need to, do you want do you want <laughs> I just add a question because I want to make a point. Do you want kids or not? Uh, I do. I, I think I do. Okay. Well, here's the point I make to everybody that I coach that's 20 years old. I want you to go all in on investments in your capital so you can be the dad that's always at the soccer game. Yeah. Like, how do you not see that? Like you can be I, the coach. Do you know how many 50 year olds I meet? They go, Oh my God, I wish I was around for my kids. I'm just now getting into multifamily investing. Like guys, this is why I harp on this so much. Go all in. I, I listened to an Andy for podcast. He goes, if you can look at me in the face and you can tell me for the last thousand days that you've done everything necessary to be better then I'll shut up. I've, I've got a buddy and he has two very young kids and they, they lived in Nashville, but he, he's been focused heavily on investing in real estate. You know, he does hotels, multifamily commercial. We helped him buy an AT&T this year. Uh, he has been focusing on that building up his passive income so that he can spend 365 days a year with his kids traveling across the country. I don't even know the last time he was back in Nashville, mm -hmm. but he's mm -hmm. always posting photos on Instagram of, you know, mountain biking with, you know, with his friends and, you know, going to these really cool places with his kids. I mean, he's with his kids every day doing these super cool, unique experiences. And it's because, and he works probably an hour a day, maybe because he's got all of this passive income that he built up from all of these properties. He's got property managers in place that report to him on everything. He doesn't have to be there answering any phone calls. He literally travels 365 days a year with his family. 
I no, mean, that's it's, that's it's all the possible. Goal. It's all possible. He's like but, mid to late thirties. But we, but we instead want to fill our life with Netflix and and bullshit. And it's like, you know what I tell him that really messes him up, bro. This is when you shut him up when you're at a meetup. Because I have, well, I did. I gave one in the divorce, and I had another one that I sold. But I had like three houses that had like four hundred k equity. I'll stare him. I'm thirty eight. I'll stare him dead in the face at twenty years old. I said, I'll sign my properties over to you right now with the equity in them if I could be 20 again. And that's when they're like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, because guess what? I'll make a hell of a lot more than that. I, my favorite is Tom Ballou when he goes, put me in any company in the fucking mailroom and I'll be CEO in a couple of years because now you know what you know. You can just move through it so much quicker. Like The, the knowledge and experience that you get, it's just – can't give it back, well. man. Can't give it back. Well, dude, this has been a blast. Tell everybody how they can find out about you, your blog, everything you got going on. Yeah. So uh, the blog you can find on my website, tylercobble.com. Uh, we're posting weekly YouTube videos on different uh, aspects of commercial real estate. So investment strategy, leasing management tips, market updates. Uh, that's just under my name, Tyler Cobble. Um, if you guys actually want to interact with me, you want to ask questions about commercial real estate, getting into commercial real estate, how to invest, Follow me on Instagram. I respond to every direct message on there. Uh, it's commercial in Nashville with underscores between uh, each word. Um, I literally do respond to every DM. He that's does. how that's how Austin and I met. Yes, it does. And I can't wait to share a cigar with you and uh, shoot the shit when you uh, absolutely. Because I know you're I, aren't your partners in Austin or something. Yeah. So well, Bruce is my partner. Wow, I'm having dinner with him Friday night, so we'll talk shit about you. It's cool. Yeah, man. <laughs> I did. I did. I tell you what. Look. Look, let's just be honest. I want to say it on record. He'll say it too. A lot of people are like, I don't know how I feel about Bruce Peterson. I'm like, I know how I feel about him. I love that man. That is an honest to the core guy. Hey, look, the, I love Bruce. Yes. I mean, he's he's one of those guys that he's he's incredibly genuine to you and to himself. Yes. And what a lot of people don't like about him is that he'll, he's just honest. Like, he'll be honest with you. He's like, I got time that's for a this stupid shit. fucking idea. Yeah. Don't do that. No, all you have to do is go out and here's like, I mean, he is, he's an incredible person. He's an yeah. amazing wealth of knowledge and damn, is he a great partner? He's the I, best yeah. man. So here's the deal. You, well, I'm interviewing him on Friday too, but you need to come to Nashville and we'll all sit around. That'll be no fun at all. Sitting around that smoking be, a cigar. I, I don't think we would have any fun smoking no. cigars. Y'all should not come to that. Me. We'll dress yeah. nice. People will be worried about how good looking we are. It's cool. Don't worry about That's it. That's right. Well, dude, don't threaten me with a good time. I mean, you know, I've, I've been uh, toying with the idea of expanding into Austin uh, eventually anyway. So, oh, you I got to, Austin. you know, I it's five times last year. It's, it's one of those things where, because I'm, I'm born and raised Texas. I lived in Nashville. I lived in Denver. I've, I've traveled a lot. But when you look at it from a, like, from a point of view of just like pure commerce, like next to Nashville, I don't know if there's in a better uh, central Texas. I mean, just business wise there, it's just, you know, and it's not going to stop. I mean, we live 26 minutes outside of town on a farm in a tiny home. And you know, the, the, the basic acre over here is like two fifty. Like it's just, yeah. you know, and we're not even close to Austin. So you're just, you know, you're just seeing Tesla just bought another 381 acres so, you know, we, they saw Elon Musk downtown last week. So, I mean, it's like, you know, Joe Rogan's here. It's crazy. Man. It's an amazing city, man. I mean, there's no, uh, look, if I, I don't think I will ever leave Nashville, mm -hmm. but if I do, it would be to go to Austin. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to be buying a condo there downtown one day oh, just so sure, I can man. come stay for, you know, weeks at a time. I mean, I love, dude, there's nothing like the riverfront there, man. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the best riverfront I've ever been to. No. Well, uh, well, I'm sure you're busy, but we're having a huge mastermind November 7th. Bruce is speaking. I'm speaking. A uh, bunch of guys are flying in from out of state. So if you don't catch this one, we'll catch another one. So Yeah, I might have to catch another one. I've got two properties closing that week. So That's all right. <laughs> I well, might have you to can be make it rain that. afterwards. Well, I appreciate right. it, my brother. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody, for listening, guys. Make sure you share it with your friends. And uh, thank you all so much for listening.
Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.